सर्वधर्म स्थापक स्तम सर्वधर्म स्वरूप आचार्याण महाचार्यो रामकृष्णाये नम स्टिंग श्री राम कृष्ण दी ग्रेट मास्टर सेकंड पार्ट एज द स्पिरिचुअल एस्पायर स्ट्रगल साधक एंड वी आर इन दी सिक्स्थ चैप्टर टूअर्ड द एंड एंड वी आर सीन हाउ श्री राम कृष्ण Sadhana started specifically from the day he started worship in the Kali Temple, and there, how the changes took place in his behavior, in his sadhana, and everything favorable to sadhana he was doing two hundred percent, and he was never satisfied by only mentally adopting something new. Or removing something old, but he would do physically also as much as possible. And Sardan Swami has shown that this is what the scriptures say in the Mundaka Upanishad. So it is not a vain idea. It is automatically Sri Ram Krishna's experiences are according to the scriptures. Now we have come to that point where he will have his. fulfillment in a way he is god himself and so the result sometimes come in the beginning of sadhana we have been in form but now how he meditated in the amlakhi and all that is gone and now we come to this last para of the chapter 13 the description of the master's attainment of the first vision of the universal mother the masters yearning at that time that is mentioned that vision of the universal mother but as we shall see it is also his experience of the nirvikalpa samadhi or the absolute reality let us see now we were told by the master himself that one day at that time he was singing for the divine mother and very eagerly prayed and wept to have her vision prayed and wept to see the reality of the divine mother he prayed to her saying does thou not a mother hear even a little of so many prayers i say to you thou dis show thyself to ram prasad why should Should thou not then reveal thyself to me? So, quoting an example, he is saying, "Why not to me?" He used to say, "There was then an intolerable anguish in my heart, anguish or tortuous pain in my heart, because I could not have her vision." now he is giving an example terrible huh? just as a man wrings a towel forcibly 
to squeeze out all the water from it. I felt as if somebody got hold of my heart. Here heart and mind is absolutely unnecessary. He got hold of my heart and was doing so with it. With that heart, he is ringing completely like a towel. That was my experience. That was my feeling. Greatly afflicted with the thought that I might never have mother season because so much I am paining and yet we are not having, so I may not have at all. That thought comes. I was dying of despair. Not only despair, but that same anguish. Being in an agony, I thought that there was then no use in living this life. That is the point. That no use living this life without the vision of the reality. Swamekanda has described this as if we do not know God, we are living an ignorant, vegetating life. Just like the vegetables grow and they are cut and thrown and again they grow. Like that we are living this life. Unless we know the purpose of life, unless we know the creator, unless we know from where we have come, unless we know the reality of ourselves and the world, we are living like a blind life without knowing anything real. We are living a blind life. So that causes agony in the heart. So, no, the more a person proceeds towards God, more this feeling comes. And that is the point where Sri Ramakrishna thought, why should I live? If I do not realize God, if I am not going to realize God in this life, then why should I live? And so, there was no use in living this life. My eyes suddenly fell upon the sword that was there in the mother's temple. So, not on the image, side on side, the mother's sword is hanging. Because mother uses that when she kills the asuras in the crematorium. So, I made up my mind to put an end to my life with it that very moment. Life was mad. I ran and caught hold of it ran toward that wall and caught hold of that sword. I made up my mind to put an end to my life with it that very moment. Like one mad, I ran and caught hold of it when suddenly I had the wonderful vision of the mother. So that is the point where I do not want to live if I do not see her. And that point comes when that is the 10% yearning, we may say, more than 10%. 10% in our language because more than that, what could be the yearning? And as Sri Ramakrishna has said, 10% yearning itself brings God. So, he suddenly, he had the wonderful vision of the mother and fell down unconscious. That is not unconsciousness. Unconscious means outside what? Fell down because this I itself was not there. So who is keeping the gravity or balance or all that? And no consciousness either of I or the world. So that is called unconsciousness. No consciousness of I or no consciousness of the world, then consciousness of what? The reality which appears as I and which appears as the world and which appears as the Ishwara or Kali, the mother. I did not know what happened then in the external world. That is the explanation. How that day and the next slipped away. So, where was he? We do not know. They must have carried him outside the temple because temple is closed in the night and it does not know what happened that day 
and the next day. So it did not come back to consciousness for a day and a half at least. No samadhi exists like this, except for the nirvikalpa samadhi. And from nirvikalpa samadhi one does not easily come back, but he is the God as man, and so he comes back. Now this is outside, huh? outside consciousness, how the day passed, he did not know, they, that day and that day, but in my heart of hearts, that means in the real personality, there was flowing a current of intense bliss never experienced before. Bliss is the nature of God. Bliss is the nature of, real nature of all of us. And so, he has reached that. And that is what happens only in the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. In every experience of God, there is joy. But intense bliss, never experienced before, current. So, as a flow. And I had the immediate knowledge. Now let me explain this word immediate at this point. It is not, immediate does not mean in time. So, Oh, Bengali original said Sakshat. Uh, the immediate equivalent in Sanskrit is Aparoksha. Sakshat could be translated as direct. Now why it has said immediate, I must explain. Directly we see, we feel. But our see, vision, is through the mind and the organs, and then we see. Now what the organs bring distorted picture, we do not know. What the mind distorts, we do not know. So anything coming through the media, see, is not the real direct vision. Now the opposite of this direct vision is the indirect vision. Through all the other means, like logic, Anuman, Upman, Arthapati, Anupalabdi, and others' teachings, all this lead to indirect knowledge. Remember, our, all these bring us ideas in the mind, not actually the vision. Now this direct vision and indirect knowledge. Now the direct vision itself is when we understand it is not direct, then what to do? We realize God because God is our real nature. And God is self-luminous. God is consciousness itself. And so, when we stop our vision going outside, we do not want to use the indirect means at all. And we do not want to use the so-called direct means also. That means we do not use the indriyas, we do not use the mind, we do not use our buddhi or eye consciousness. Then what remains? God himself. So I have told you repeatedly what my Guruji said, that conclusion is that God in me is the medium through which I see God. This is immediately. Without any mediacy, that God reveals itself to my inner consciousness. In Thakur's language, bodhe bodhai. In my consciousness, the real consciousness shines. That it is called immediate aparoksha. So, that is why the direct has been translated as immediate because the normal word direct does not give us real direct knowledge. And others are indirect. And I had the immediate knowledge of the light that was Mother. Now, 
this translation will have to be modified. Like that was mother, the Bengali word is Vikas and Prakash, Prakash, Mayer Sakshat Prakash, Upalabdi Huye Korea Chilam, Upalabdi is experiencing. Now Prakash in Bengali means manifestation. A thing is hidden and then it becomes manifested, that is Prakash. So, Mother's mother has manifested her ill nature. I had the immediate experience of mother having manifested herself in my consciousness. That could be the better translation. These words are untranslatable. So light that was mother, light capital L, light always represents consciousness. So mother's nature is consciousness and that consciousness I experienced immediately. So the meaning would be that mother's real nature which is consciousness was manifested fully in my consciousness. In my consciousness mother's which is consciousness was revealed completely without any mediacy. Now, this is one description, but Thakur has described this very experience at other times in slightly different way. So, let us see that now. On another occasion, the master described to us in detail. So, this is not so detailed. This shows outside nothing, two days nothing, inside bliss and Manifestation of mother's real nature, directly manifested, more than directly manifested. Now, on another occasion, the master described to us in detail his wonderful vision spoken of before. So, the vision is wonderful, he has spoken, but other times he has spoken more detail. So, Sharadan Swamiji is giving in two installments, that and thou next. He said, in Thakur's words, it was as if, because externally no consciousness, it was as if houses, doors, temples and all other things vanished altogether. I thought so, I thought so. Because where from houses will come? In Bengali, ghar is room, not house. House is called body in Bengali. So ghar in plural means rooms. Then dwar, doors. Mandir. Now this mandir should not have been made plural. Mandir. In Bengal it is not shown as plural. Mandir. Otherwise mandir gulo or like that. So here I would translate as rooms, doors, temple. Because he was in the temple. And all other things, whatever is in the temple, in that room, vanished altogether as if there was nothing anywhere. So the world has become zero, not there at all. That is the rise of consciousness. That is the unconsciousness outside. And what I saw, so nothing in the world, but inside something is there. And what I saw was a boundless, infinite consciousness sea of light. 
Now, light always represents consciousness. The nearest to consciousness is light, which enables us to see. So, this is a conscious light, boundless, infinite, conscious light. So, where is Mother there? This is the description of the ultimate reality. That ultimate reality is infinite, unbounded consciousness. So that light is described as conscious light. I would say consciousness as light. Light as consciousness. So infinite, boundless consciousness. And he has already told about the bliss. And he see, so that is the, what we call, existence consciousness, bliss or satyadananda, akhanda. So, that is why Saradhan Samji has given this afterwards. I found a continue, no, infinite consciousness of sea of light. However far and in whatever direction I look inside, Outside nothing. I found a continuous succession of effulgent waves coming forward. So that effulgent waves means waves of the sea of consciousness. That consciousness boundless appears like a sea. And there appears some movement in that consciousness. And the movement is like the waves. And what do these waves do? They will catch hold of I and drown it. That means I will go away. What will remain there? Not that zero. It is bliss and consciousness. I found a continuous succession of effulgent waves coming forward, raging and storming from all sides with a great speed, tremendous speed. They are all coming at the center, from all sides. Very soon they fell on me and made me sing to the unknown bottom. Unknown bottom means I have gone out of vision. Experience is still going on, my dear. Experience is going on without the I. Experience is going on of infinite boundless ocean from where waves were coming and that wave drowned that eye. So no eye but experience. What more could be the description of Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Made me sink to the unknown bottom. I panted Struggled, that means not this breath, huh? I wanted to live. So, and that is being drowned. So it panted and struggled, but gone, could not succeed and felt unconscious. So, unconscious about the outside world already, unconscious about I now. This I struggled and panted, but was drowned. So this is the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The master, that is up to this, Thakur's words. Now Saradhan Samadhi is commenting. The master told us that at the time of his first vision, first direct experience, we should say, he saw a conscious sea of light. But what about the Divine Mother's form consisting of pure consciousness only? So, what is Mother consisting of pure consciousness? That is the universal reality or what we call God. A personal God. A person who is nothing but consciousness. What about that? Because he wanted to see the Mother. And he wanted to see the reality of the mother and he saw the ultimate reality. So did he not see that mother? That is the question. 
So simultaneously with that infinite, he had seen the mother form also. So mother form is the personalized aspect of God. So he has seen that. How do you know? Consisting of pure consciousness only, the form of hers with hands that give boons and freedom from fear, that which you are accustomed to do the worship of. Kali, the mother, is the personal God who assures fearlessness and gives work. That is the position. So, what about that form, which represents the personal aspect of God in the form of Kali, the mother, which is only Chaitanya and which he was accustomed to worship every day? What about that? Did the master then have the vision of that form also in that sea of light? So sea of light becomes the main thing. But in that, the personalized form also does he see? It appears that he had. How? For as soon as he had the slightest consciousness at the time of his first vision, at the time is after that experience, he comes back to the world. So that is called the slightest consciousness. Slightest consciousness of something apart from that reality or that form of the reality where I comes. You cannot see a form unless I is there. I has gone. All forms have gone. And it is only consciousness. But he, in the beginning, was panting for the universal mother with that form. To see that form, I has to come. And that is what is called slightest consciousness. Slightest consciousness means I am this body and all that is not there. But I has come. I, the seer, has come to see something. So, with that slightest consciousness, at the time of his first vision means, after that thing was over, he, we are told, not by Thakur himself, he, we are told, uttered repeatedly the word mother in a plaintive voice. So, from that, the, see the sequence. First he told consciousness. First he told mother's direct vision and said mother's direct vision is explained by him later on as nothing but consciousness. So what about that personalized form of mother which he was worshipping every day? So that must also have been there because when he came out to some slightest consciousness of I, he was uttering plentifully Katar Avaj Ma Ma Ma. So this is how Sardhan Swamiji has painted it. I think Thakur's words and with his inferential conclusion. We have some more support for this also. You know, Thakur told later on. Later on, Totapuri came and with his help, Thakur again had miracle Samadhi. How we say again? Wherever he had come and he had certain experiences. And he says that what Bhairavi and Tota taught me in his language, mother had already shown me. So he had all those experiences without following any scriptures with the ideas from the scriptures and intensity of his heart, he has had this Nirvikarpa Samadhi also. Anyway, that is a secondary proof. But by the very description here, we understand that though he says direct vision of the mother, by the description we find that it is beyond all forms. Even the eye is not there. But when the slightest eye has come back, he has 
seen mother inferentiate because he says, he utters ma, ma, ma. That is how the whole description has taken place. So what do we understand from this? That 10% yearning, however and wherever we get it, 10% yearning will give us the realization of any particular personalized form as well as the direct realization of the absolute reality without I or the word. Now, effect of this. That is another wonderful thing in Sri Ramakrishna. We already said that because he is God himself, so he has got this as a fruit, but he has yet to do sadhana. And what for? When that vision came to an end, there arose in the heart of the master an eager, incessant cry of lamentation for a constant immediate vision of the Divine Mother's form. So, there are two things. Experiencer, experience and the state of consciousness. So, this experience gave him a state of consciousness. But the experience is not continuous. And because his eagerness is 10%, he again, not only again, but he wants that experience continuously. That is what the hankering is for. Hankering to have the vision. He got the vision. And now the, he got more than the vision. And now, again, continuous hankering to always have the vision. Now that is something we should say terrible. Because if he continuously has that vision, he will not be dealing in the world. And he wanted that. Who cares for the world when the reality is there? Either personalized or impersonal. So he wants that personal aspect, including you may say impersonal, continuously. There arose in the heart of the master an eager, incessant cry of lamentation. He is feeling sorry why he is not having that. For a constant, immediate vision of the Divine Mother's form, consisting of consciousness only, that is repeated. Mother means consciousness, personalized form. When I is there, we see the personalized form. I and personalized form both will vanish in the impersonal. Although it was not always manifested in external symptoms like weeping, that inside lamentation is there, not that it is always weeping. Weeping, etc. It always existed in his heart. Sometimes it increased so much, so intensity changes. Sometimes it increased so much that unable to suppress it, he is not trying to show it, he is trying to suppress it. But he is not weeping. But It increased so much that unable to suppress it, he fell on the ground and struggled in pain because of this sorrow. He wept so much, saying, Bestow thy grace on me, mother. Show thyself to me. So the so-called Vedantists may not understand that. They said once Nirvikal, that is all right. But he is not an ordinary sadhak, remember. He is God as man, in whom the sadhana is being shown like a cinema. So that fruit has come first, but the intensity, it has added to the intensity. So the intensity is continuous till he becomes fixed with that experience, till then. The peop that people gathered all around him, even a shade of a concern for what they would think of 
such restlessness did not arise in his mind at that time. That means he is lying on the ground, weeping, and people have gathered around him. He does not care for that. So, actually, the external world is almost upset. It is like a shadow now. He used to say, although people stood all around, they appeared unreal like shadows or pictures painted on a canvas. So, they did not appear real to him. Appears, but not real. So, it is called shadow or paintings. And the slightest sense of shame or hesitation did not touch the mind. Uh, what they will say, that shame. Hesitation in their presence. Did not touch the mind on that account. But immediately after I lost consciousness, on account of unbearable anguish, I saw that form of the mother. So, in externally, he has to again go to unconscious. Loses the external consciousness, again sees the mother. Personalized or impersonalized or both. He is calling it mother now. With the hands that give wounds and freedom from fear. So, the personalized form. The form that smiled, spoke, and consoled, and taught me in endless ways. So, that is the directness of the vision. Mother is speaking, it does not see only the form. Mother is speaking to him, consoled him, and taught him so many things of the spiritual world. So that is, we have come to an end of the description of Nirvikalp Samadhi, personalized form of mother, desire to continuously see it, weeping, and again and again that form becomes manifest, till it becomes continuous. Now, we go to chapter 7. This very result now, Permanently what it does to him now. And the name is sadhana and divine inebriation. So, now sadhana. First was called eagerness and vision. And after now, sadhana. So, this will become a model for us again. And a point of that sadhana, when he loses the external consciousness, then it is almost like madness or intoxication. But it is not ordinary intoxication. So it is called divine inebriation. So the Bengali name is sadhana or divya unmattata. Divya unmattata. Divine inebriation. Uh, let us see. The state after the first vision. The master became quite unfit for all work for some days on account of the bliss arising from the vision of the mother. Some days. That means he will gain mastery over this also. He will get control over this also and will be able to do puja afterwards. But at that point, no puja. It became impossible for him to perform regularly the worship and other duties of the temple. Rida somehow managed them with the help of another Brahmin and applied his mind to arranging for some treatment for his uncle, thinking that he was afflicted with insanity. That is what the outside world will think. Rida thought like that and he wants to arrange some treatment without the knowledge of the owners. That is what he wants. He had become somehow acquainted with a physician of the princely house of Bukailas. Prince was means Raja, under whose treatment he placed the master now. And knowing that there was no possibility of a speedy recovery, he sent word to his mother and brother at Kamarpuko. Because they should know what has happened. The master's physical sensations and mental perceptions 
at this time, his visions. So he is having continuous visions. Let us see. <coughs> the master proceeded to perform the worship on the days on which he did not become altogether restless or devoid of consciousness on account of the overwhelming eagerness for God vision. So sometimes less intensity. He is normal. So he does worship. He has not deliberately given up that you should understand. Karma of any type is not to be deliberately given. When one enters the consciousness point level, then the karma drops off. And in Thakur's case, if he is normal, he is doing karma. He told us, sometimes a little of the thoughts and experiences at the time. So what were the thoughts and experiences? He told a little about it to us later on. Time of his worship and meditation in those days. So worship when he does, what does he see? When he meditates, what does he see? He said, I used to show to my mind the image of Bhairava in meditation on the parapet of the roof of the music hall. So in the music hall, music hall here is not mandir. On the top roof parapet, there were images. And there were images of Bhairava, Shiva's companions. And the Bhairava is sitting in meditation. Now that is stone, so it will never change. So he is telling his mind, you must be firm and motionless like it and meditate on mother's lotus feet. Devotion, so lotus feet and meditate and absolutely be absorbed. No moment of mind also. See that Bhairava. No sooner had I sat, no peculiar experience, huh? no sooner had I sat down for meditation, then I heard clattering sounds produced in the joints of my body and limbs from the direction of the legs upwards and they got locked one after another. Joints are getting locked as if someone from within, not from outside, huh? Someone from within turned the keys. As long as I meditated, I had no power to move my body and change my position even slightly or give up meditation and go elsewhere or do anything else at will. So meditation is continuing like a flow and till then he cannot like our restlessness that was absent. I was, as it were, forcibly made to sit in the same position as long as the joints did not make cluttering sounds as before and were unlocked. So that is the intensity of self-control or being absorbed in God. That we do not use our body at all. So from leg upwards, the joints are getting locked with a sound. And then again, after the meditation is over, somebody is opening those locks. And then he can move here and there. This time from the direction of the head to the legs. When I sat and meditated, I had in the beginning, the vision, beginning, before this Samadhi, and in the beginning, the vision of particles of light like groups of fireflies. That is all in the Upanishads. Khadyodhu. And at other times, I perceived that all things were pervaded by bright waves of light like molten silver. So silver, shining, white, molten, that is pervaded everywhere. That means the consciousness more predominant than the other things of the world.
that is in the beginning i saw these things sometimes with my eyes shut and sometimes with my eyes open so we shut our eyes do we shut our ears do we shut our nose do we shut other things so shut or open is mental outside will we appear to see but there is no consciousness of the external world so that is an important point i did not understand what i saw so buddhi does not work there nor did i know whether it was good or bad this ethical sense also does not work there to have such visions i therefore prayed to mother with a troubled heart i don't understand mother what is happening to me i don't know mantras etc by which to call the so i do not know this or i do not know that i do not know the mantras by which to call the please teach me personally what may enable me to realize the before the realization is asking and after also the mother is teaching him so he wants direct light from god if thou dost not teach me who else will kenaram bhattacharya is given initiation i am done but who can teach god himself as man so who can teach him the reality of god only for there is no refuge for me except the so when mind comes to this position for our self also for sadhaka when the mind comes to this position that i do not depend on anybody or anything in this world we may have this or that but dependence ashraya of anything when it disappears from the mind then god will take responsibility i used to pray thus with a concentrated mind and we piteously on account of the eagerness of my heart what changes were produced in all his actions and ideas by the first vision the master's worship meditation etc underwent novel changes it is difficult to explain to others that wonderful state of complete absorption in her they were in that state after vision child like sincerity faith dependence and sweetness on sweetness because god is appearing with the divine mother for their stay so all the thoughts pertain to divine mother and support stay and support divine mother the seriousness of an adult the calculating mind the personal efforts for the observance of injunctions and prohibition so all the karma kanda do this or do not do that according to time place and person at this time at this place with this person the conducting of oneself with forethought for conforming to both worldliness and godliness so we must conform to both worldliness and godliness for that we have to make some effort that is not possible none of these were to be seen in that attitude of his whenever one saw him one thought that he had merged his little will and the little ego in the will of her who was the source of all wills and did everything as if he was completely an instrument in her hand pray in his heart of hearts mother my only refuge kindly make me thy boy say and do what i should so instrument or a child of the mother as there arose naturally under these circumstances a great difference between the faith and actions of worldly people and his own conduct and behavior various people began to say various thing in the beginning itself they were telling madness at first in whispers 
and later in loud gossip. But all these matter little to him because they are not real, they are shadows. For the boy of the Divine Mother was now moving and doing everything by her direction. The, everybody moves, but he does not know. He puts his own ego there. The vain clamor of the world, vain, meaningless, valueless. Clamor of the world did not reach his ears at all. Ears are open, but this worldly things are not entering. Although in the world he was not. So he still seen in the world, but he was not of the world. The external world was now transformed for him into a dream world. So experience is going on. It appears real at that time. But it is not real. That is called dreamlike. Shadow-like, dreamlike. Now he could not attribute reality to it in spite of efforts. In spite of efforts, and the normal plane, his reality is not coming. The universal mother's form, consisting of pure consciousness and bliss, was now known to him as the only reality. So that much change, permanent change has come due to that vision. The difference between the previous worship, vision, etc. of the Master and those of this time. So now, comparative statement. This we shall see on Monday now. Om Sarva Dharma Sthampakastham Sarva Dharma Swarupaka Acharyanam Mahacharyo Ramakrishna Yate Namaha Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. Thank mm -hmm. you.